Starfighters. Welcome to Mad Science Films. I'm Jimmy P, filmmaker and sexual astronaut. First up, please check out our fourth feature film for free over on YouTube. Just search for Little Monster or click on the link in the show notes below. This episode, I'm joined by a very special guest, a founding member of the Welsh production company Powerhouse, Broadside Productions, and recipient of his very own Mad Science Films theme tune, Mr. Dan Bailey. Dan Bailey. Welcome, Daniel. Hello, hello. <laughs> I don't know what I'm more proud of, you know, the work that I've done or that, that theme tune that we created. We've created and yet has taken on a life of its own. You've become a man. It has, it has, it has spread. <laughs> Let's pack our Veruca shoes because this episode we're doing a deep dive into setting up your own production company and earning a living while doing filmmaking. So, Dan, like, would you mind giving us a bit of context into how Broadsides uh, came into being? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, so the Broadside itself have, have three directors. That's myself. It's a, uh, a guy called Tom Gripper that a lot of you might know, and another gentleman called Ridian. Um, and Ridian and Tom were best mates. They went; they both lived in the village, uh, same village together when they were young, um, and they kind of grew up together. And they were making films when they were like nine, ten o'clock. Sorry, nine, ten years old, and um, in the village. And they were sort of just messing about with cameras and whatever. And they were, you know, chucking things together. And then they came up with this this name, Broadside. Um, and then as they sort of started getting older and stuff, started meeting new people. And then I, when I was at school, I used to do a lot of drama. And I was in one of their films um, when I was about 15, 16. And um, I decided that I you know, fancied giving it a go behind the camera. So I joined them. Um, I joined the company as, as it was at the time. It was just sort of, you know, young, young people just messing about. Um, and then we sort of, yeah, we started to make it take it a bit seriously when we were sort of 16, 17, started to realise this is actually something we could actually go and do. And yeah, then, you know, the team was was relatively big, about five or six people in it. And um, as, the, as, as it grew wow. then, I, we all became directors as we created a limited company, as we sort of, you know, kind of get into the real world. Um, and yeah, it's kind of gone from there, really. And we've kind of, the three of us then, we lead a team of six um, so it's three of us and then three other people. So we've got Alan, Daniel, Kerry Evans and Jan Engs as well, who also are part of the company. And yeah, we just sort of plod along now and sort of get on with other projects. And yeah, as, we, as, as I said, the projects just get, seem to get bigger and bigger as we go and get older. Fantastic. So with each of the people, so like, let, let's focus on like the main six then. Yeah. Um, do each of you guys kind of bring your own speciality or key skills to that then? And, and how does the division of labor kind of like divvy up between you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Like, so when, <clears throat> when we bring somebody into the company, we kind of, we don't just sort of say yes to everybody, you know, we, we, we kind of assess who they are and sort of see what they could bring to the, the table. And if they can bring a skill that we may not already have, um and the team at the moment we feel like we've got like a bit of a dream team because we, we kind of cover every aspect of of you know if we made an in-house film we could make one because we've got every department or at least you know the key elements of making a film um within within our with our company so you know we've we've you know the way we divvy it up it kind of just falls it kind of just falls into the fact that if we need someone to shoot um you know you know, just quickly on a camera, you know, Kerry's, Kerry works in the camera department, so he's got a lot of his own kit and stuff like that. Um, you know, things like paperwork and admin, Ridian seems to just get on with. Um, Alan, is, uh, he, he's an editor, so he does all post-production, he even sort of leads post-production on our projects as well as our kind of post-production producers as such, so we can get on with other projects. Um, and then myself and Tom just make sure that the company runs smoothly. And we've got people like Jan then who we can, you know, if we're working on projects, he can then step up and, and, and work on either smaller projects or work as, you know, alongside us as producers. Or, you know, if Tom just, you know, can, is writing and directing and I'm producing, then Jan will come in and help me produce. So it's really, it's like a, it's like a rotational kind of, you know, if you're into your sports and stuff, you know, it's like a, like a team that just rotates and knows each other's roles and just slots in whenever they need to be. That's brilliant that, like, and especially, you know, if you've hit this magic number of six, you've mm. got like, the capacity then to kind of develop several projects at the same time. Exactly, now, yeah. 
I think when you and I started working together, it was back in 2017 on a web series, which who knows will it'll end yeah. the end of the day. <laughs> but I know at the same time, Broadside, you guys were doing like a short film a month, which is yeah. insane. And I'm sure you've got uh, some advice about, you know, whether to pursue that or not. Um, but also what I loved about that, obviously, was just by making 11, 12 short films yeah. within a year, uh, working with a number of different collaborators. Now, was that kind of the idea behind the project or was it just to make the content or, or a bit of both? Or what, what was the thinking behind trying to do something as ambitious as that? So, yeah. <laughs> so I graduated from university in 2016 and I pretty much, I was, you know, I was obviously still, you know, running the company, having run the company or whatever. But after that, I kind of became a little bit more hands-on and we really kind of, I, with where we were at you know it was all, we were always moving forward but as you know as I came into the company a bit more because I wasn't studying anymore I kind of injected a little bit more pace and having all of us then have all those that motivation we kind of so we were in a limbo we were in a limbo at the time you know we were discussing about you know we were doing corporate videos and um fiction stuff all at the same time and we were like well we, we don't really have time to do both so which one should we sort of choose and it was kind of our big decision at like the beginning of to end of 2016 what should we do and we all decided that we didn't want to make corporate videos for the rest of our lives nothing wrong with making corporate videos but for, as, as a majority of a group we didn't want to do that and we decided that we were going to go more down fiction and then it came well how do we make ourselves heard you know we're quite young nobody knows who we are and we need to get ourselves out there and see what we can do so I think one of the team members who's no longer you know part of the team as such he's decided that he was like um why don't we make a short film every month of 2017 um and we were like yeah let's just do it let's just do it um so we decided so I think the first first month we used the film that we'd already released I think it was a film called The Dreamers um that we worked with <clears throat> with um Johan who's now part of the company and they were like 16 um and I produced that with them and they were 16 <clears throat> with Sam Zucker as well but um yeah they you know that we released that to kind of give us a head start but as for, from then I think most of the films that we released we actually shot and created from the first day of the month to the last day of the month we released on the last day so yeah. I think it was eventually 11 um but you know I, I was the spearhead of that project and yeah it really kind of you know it opened my eyes and also as a filmmaker I learned a lot in that year and I wouldn't be where I am without that project you know what I mean but oh my god yeah if, if you ever fancy doing something like that just prepare yourself because well, I was not prepared <laughs> it's, it's the reason that the guy who's who came up with the idea no longer in the company because of that you're, like, you're out no. that's a terrible idea <laughs> no no to be fair it was a really good idea you know it, it got us it, it did what we needed it to do for us yeah. um so it was really good it's just it was hard work to get there um, yeah and i mean and, and 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 you know it wasn't as if that was your only focus i know you guys were working on several projects including the web yeah. series uh i dragged you away for pretty much uh you know a chunk of a month mm -hmm. uh to do the little monster the feature film you were first ad on that so yeah, <laughs> I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, it wasn't as if that was all you were doing during that time. There was, yeah, loads of other projects going yeah. on at the same time. Yeah, I think we were just super eager. We, you know, we were all we just, you know, we were young and we were just super eager to sort of get content out and release content and just, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't just do it. You know, a lot of people kind of go to work, you know, in certain places because... And no fault of their own, they go to it because they have to, because they have to pay for bills and they may have sort of responsibilities that they need to be able to have to pay for every month. And at being quite young, we didn't necessarily have any of those responsibilities or anything holding us back. And people might go to work and not enjoy their job, whereas we absolutely love our jobs. It's, you know, even now, you know, I have to sort of slog it through for 10 years, but we absolutely love our jobs. And the reason why we did it is because we didn't just want to get seen and whatever, but the, the predominant reason of doing it is because we just love doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, that, and I think that's the biggest advice really is that if you don't love doing it, it's really difficult to carry on because yeah. the motivation you lose and you just, you won't go anywhere. And, and I think that unless you kind of are lucky and land a, a bit, you know, a, a job that just quite keen, either keeps going, I think like, you know, if, if, if you don't if you, if you like especially if you're freelance you know unless you get 
a job and you don't have the motivation and you're not going to look for jobs, then where's that money coming from? Do you know what I mean? If you don't love it. So you kind of have to have that deep down love for it. I mean, we, we, all, we all know that there is also on the top level a hatred for it. But um, <laughs> but underneath all that hatred, there is a deep down love that you just, it makes, it's like an animal that just wants more feeding, like venom kind of inside you just needs feeding. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is like a sickness. And and when I've spoken to other people, it, it, it's kind of a disease where you feel like okay what do normal people do like free time what's that like you know yeah. uh, but like a couple of times like i've drifted away from filmmaking for a few months and i'm like oh this is quite nice yeah free time Let, let's see what you know people are talking about on netflix and all this kind of stuff but it just drags you back it just you know like any time yeah. like what i find is those times i've decided to kind of jack it in that's when, unfortunately, my brain goes into overdrive and, like, you know, gives me, like, a huge amount of ideas. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I know the people who can help me make it. So, yeah, it's absolutely. absolutely. It is, it's a weird passion. Um, it may well be a mental health issue. I mean, <laughs> 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 no, but that's, I, I think that's a really important point. Um, and it's it's something that not enough people really talk about is, yeah, absolutely. You, you've got to have a love for it. You can't be just in it for, yeah, financial gain or... Or to be seen or whatever it, it needs to be yeah something and especially like um and you'll know this now with you know like working on features because the amount of time you've got to invest in a project you know you can be working on on a project for over a year yeah you need to be passionate about filmmaking yeah. to, you know want to kind of you know keep dragging yourself back to it yeah uh, um yeah i i mean post-production on little monster was just over a year yeah um and you know obviously our focus was also split on different things but yeah I, you know you you need that passion to kind of keep dragging you back and i'm glad you've got it man and uh yeah you know, now, now you're in you know what mid mid 20s yeah oh, just yeah just I'm, I'm, well, I'm 26 wow see still so disgustingly young Dan. <laughs> <laughs> my bones are starting to say otherwise there you go so i mean with the the uh film a month uh thing is that something that you know you feel overall was a good experience um, or it, was that something that you, you know, kind of lesson learned and nah, I wouldn't, wouldn't ever try to do that again? Well, I think the biggest, the biggest thing that sort of, you know, that was the hardest thing that every film we shot was zero budget officially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apart from, apart from one, which was, I think was like, oh, I think it was something around 150 quid or something like that, mm -hmm. because it was part of some sort of scheme um and the guy who came to us chris lang he, he had a little bit of cash from that little scheme which was like 150 quid yeah. um so like i said every, everything else was either you know me chipping in a couple of quid for a prop or lunch or whatever or you know one of the other members of the team doing it or the direct because like i said with the collaboration thing we did we did make a very conscious effort to work with someone different at least the director every short and i think i think every short is directed by somebody new um so it's, it's that conscious effort but they then you know they then chipped in with a little bit of cash maybe like for like i said for lunch or like yeah. when we were at your house it was like andy tooby's birthday and i think someone chipped in for a cake do you know that kind of thing <laughs> yeah. so it was it, you know everything else was i was begged borrowed or stolen um and and like i said you know that was the biggest, that was the biggest learning curve. I think one of my most, you know, biggest pieces of advice as well is that if anybody fancies being, you know, in the film industry or in the TV industry, um, no matter what you want to be, it's always, I, you know, I think it's a really good idea to try and make a short film, no longer than five minutes, with no money. Because yeah. I feel like now, now, you know, I, I get paid money to, to make films now, so... Um, you know, but I still use those skills, like looking outside the box and how to do things as cheap as possible. I still use those skills to, you know, when I when I'm making films with money now. So it's even though you know you've got money that you can throw at it, why would you throw some money at any a problem that's arisen? You know, say a problem that the money wouldn't go on screen necessarily. Yeah. Um, you know, for like you know, because at the end of the day. Well, if you're on location and you're out on location for a while and you have to, you know, accommodate your crew and, and cast, the money that goes on the accommodation, of course, you have to look after everybody, absolutely, but that doesn't go on screen. So you kind of have to balance that. And it's figuring out, like, 
you know how to bet the best way of getting around a situation with the like the like or, or, or a problem or an issue with the le- le- like the s- small amount of money you have to throw at it because then that money can go back onto screen yeah and like yes if you're you know if you're working on like you know the next james bond film whatever if you've got you know they've got that kind of budget you probably can so just throw money at a problem and um you know that's fine because that's that's the way it's the easiest way to get around an, an issue but at my stage, in my stage especially when we make our features not necessarily when i work on external projects but when we make our when we make our films broadside yeah. you know it's it's tr- you know we we're, we're promoting ourselves at the end of the day with that film we're not just making a film because someone wants whatever we are making that film to promote ourselves as a production company um you know to become bigger and bigger because we're not going to stop and there's, there's there's no such there's, there's no such thing as oh you've got to you've got to the highest level what is the highest level yeah. you know what I mean what is that highest level mm-hmm. you know, we're not going to stop until we get to the highest level that we can possibly reach in our lifetime and that doesn't matter what level that is that could be the biggest level or it could be just a level <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, yeah, but yeah. we will keep striving and like I said the money issue is that if you can find a way of dealing with it without spending money and it a problem, then you can put that money back on screen. And that's the, that's, that's, that's the biggest kind of thing that we kind of try and push for um, when we work together. Um, and that's the biggest thing we learned when, when, when we did the, the, the short films a month in 2017. It was, it was understanding that trying to make, I don't know, they were like between you know, two and 10 minute long short films and creating that, you know, it's a couple of days shoot, trying to get people to come on board, getting people who are like-minded on board with no money and people who want to get experience and people who like do us favours. You know, we tried to work with different DPs as well. So, you know, and, and we met some, you know, fantastic DPs while we did it. And we're still working with the, the same crew today. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and building that kind of arsenal of people, you know, you kind of, you know, like I said, we're still working with people we were, we were working with then, back in 2016, 2017, because you kind of find people who you love to work with and then you keep working with them. But that, you know, and but we're not exclusive. We don't just use people that we already know. We love bringing on new people. Um, and we already always, always have. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's that 2017 was probably the making of us as filmmakers and a company. And it could have been the breaking of you, but you it guys could have been, uh, yeah. pushed through. Yeah, no, brilliant. I was never, never going to let it beat me. Come on. <laughs> I was never going to let it beat me. <laughs> I mean, technically, there are only 11 films, so... <laughs> yeah, that does get that does keep me up at night sometimes. <laughs> that does keep me up at night. Just gets under my skin a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Hey, there's, you know, perhaps you could do the sequel, you know, 2022, 12. No, let's do 24 short films <laughs> <laughs> Tom Griffin will kill me yeah. <laughs> <laughs>